I want to talk about dealing with emotions because I had an experience when I was a young devotee which I think was unhealthy emotionally and probably a lot of devotees have dealt with this or are still dealing with this or maybe don't know they're dealing with it and they are. When we first become devotees, renunciation is a big thing because we're having to renounce things that we've done all our life. Illicit sex and toxic, not all our life, but a lot of our life was very involved in sinful activity, which we must renounce, and other things so we can live a simple life. And very much in Christ, Christian consciousness, it's very much about sense control and mind control. Don't allow yourself to dwell on sense objects. And don't allow yourself to think about sense objects. Now, the problem comes that often, before we think, we feel. So I might be thinking about a sense object which is unhealthy. I can't engage it in Krishna consciousness. I can't use it, at least, let's say for this example. In my present condition, there's no, I can't use this in Krishna service. I'm just dwelling on how it will give me pleasure. So before I'm dwelling on it, I'm actually feeling it often. It's maybe subtle, and then it goes as a thought. And, and what I used to do, I would suppress my feelings because I felt, well, if I feel this, then I'm going to be engaged in it, thinking, feeling, and willing. But there are aspects of feeling which do not necessarily impel you to act. They're just allowing yourself to, how does, how does it feel right now? What am I feeling? What's checking in with myself? So I, I was reflecting on this, and I was thinking that I developed an unhealthy attitude of repressing emotions so I would have to feel them out of fear that if I felt them, I would engage with them. It kind of makes sense, right? But there are more mature ways to deal that because if we do that, then we develop this habit of totally cutting ourselves off from emotions and emotions are meant to guide you. They give you, they, there's a lot of things we learn from emotions that we can't learn from our mind. Like, you know, when you feel guilty, that's a sign I've done something wrong. So it's a signal emotionally to our consciousness that you just did something you shouldn't have done. Or when we're feeling certain ways about people, it could be a signal. You know you're feeling um, prejudiced towards this person or angry or whatever you're feeling, it's not good. And sometimes we suppress those feelings so we don't really know, we can't really register how bad we are, our, our contamination level, so to speak, or our prejudice level, or, or whatever it is because we cut it off and so we're not we're not in real touch with actually where we are and then if you cut it off you can't work on it because you don't admit you have it. So that was something that I did and I think a lot of devotees do to protect themselves from giving in to desire is just on the emotional level just cut it off, don't feel it and that way I'm safe now because I'm not feeling it. But it's maybe you're safe in the moment so to speak but it's an unhealthy way to live and if it is a problem, how can you heal it if you keep snuffing it and pretending you can just cut it off like that without, without actually recognizing it? Now, one of our God brothers did a study of how many people Prabhupada gave sannyas to, and Prabhupada gave sannyas to 45 men, and only 17 of them made it, which is you know not difficult to understand considering they're all in their 20s. But then the question would remain, and you could ask these men who didn't make it, why did you allow yourself to do it? Were you not feeling somewhat incompetent or worried or like that? And a lot of times we are, but we cut it off because they say, well, if I'm feeling that way, I won't be able to do it, so I should cut it off because I want to do it. But by cutting it off, you lost a sense of touch with your reality of what you could do. And so it wasn't good to cut off. It's better you stay there with the doubt and thinking, maybe I shouldn't do this because I'm not ready. That would have been more realistic because it proved to be true that you weren't ready. So these are the kinds of things that happen when you cut yourself off. You lose touch with your own reality. And then, like we said the other day, you have to make choices about life. And if you're cut off from your own reality, not admitting where you're at because you tend not to feel it, so you don't get an accurate assessment of what's going on internally, then you can make bad choices. Or at least you can't calibrate the best way to advance because you don't even know where you're at on an emotional level and that emotional level can indicate a lot to you. Hope that makes sense. Maybe you have to listen to this again. Maybe this is new. Maybe this is old for some of you. 
maybe this is common sense, I don't know, but I think, I think for a lot of devotees, this is important. The last thing I would say, uh, often when we feel something on the emotional level, as I said, you know, okay, let's give an example. I said, you know, you don't want to feel it because you don't want to go there. So let's say a young man is feeling something for a woman, and naturally he wants to cut off the emotion because he's afraid if he allows that emotion to grow, and he wants to remain brahmacharya for five years more, it's not going to happen. But there's another level of emotion which he can experience, which is the experience of what it feels like to be a brahmachari that's thinking about a woman uh, in a lustful way. That's a, a not a happy feeling. That's a kind of a dirty feeling. So if he allows himself to feel that feeling, that feeling will actually purify him. Rather than feel the lust, he should feel what the lust feels like. What does it feel like to be lusty? So I'm feeling the lust. Don't go with that. Go with the feeling of what it feels like to be lusty. And then you'll feel, yeah, this is a not a happy feeling. It's a very dirty feeling. It's not appropriate for a brahmachari. And so by connecting with that emotion, it can actually help him detach. And we're not really trained to do that because we're not, we, most of us are not trained to really, really know how to deal with our emotions. But I found it's very purifying if you connect emotionally with what's going on and look at your own consciousness and start to allow yourself to feel it. So oftentimes, because we're trying to be Krishna conscious, these lower things will feel very painful and very dirty and yucky and and by allowing yourself to feel that we t we will tend to let it go so oh, i don't want to feel this way this is not right if if i feel this way it must be wrong because when i'm in krishna consciousness it feels good it feels right and when we have krishna conscious experiences emotional experiences we never want to cut those off so but i don't think we should cut any off because they all contain information and if we know how to process the information then we can use it to our advantage. And if we don't, it's going to be a problem. It's going to show up somewhere. Or it's going to block a certain part of our consciousness from being clear about things we should and shouldn't do. Hare Krishna. Oh.